We have a group of tests called inflammatory markers and C-reactive protein is the most common inflammatory marker that is tested. It's an acute phase reactant protein which is produced in the liver usually in response to any form of inflammation. So the source of the inflammation can be infection, it can be vaccination or it may be related to inflammation in the lungs related to an aspiration pneumonia for example with meconium or milk aspiration. Any procedure on the baby like a surgical procedure can cause a rise in CRP and if the baby had an extravasation injury as well this could cause a rise in CRP. So it's very important to realize that it's an acute phase reactant inflammation and it's not fully specific to infection. The normal is less than 6 to 10 milligrams percent and a higher more sustained rise is seen in bacterial sepsis. Usually we see numbers more than 40 and a lag period of 12 to 24 hours before it rises is seen. So you cannot rule out infection just because the CRP is normal. And this is one scenario where we might be finding procalcitonin to be useful. We have some extreme premature babies who don't mount a significant CRP response despite confirmed sepsis. Your CRP count may not be high in these babies. So you have to be cautious before you decide to treat based on a CRP response or uh, not to treat based on a normal CRP. Also the trend can guide the duration of treatment. The peak value of the CRP doesn't necessarily indicate the severity as a quick response may be seen in aspiration pneumonia. It can reach 70, 80 and come down to 40s by the very next day. In a gram negative sepsis, it often goes to 200s and the same with fungal sepsis and it takes a few days to start responding. So a failure to drop in the CRP or a CRP continuing to rise for the 24 to 48 hours after you start the antibiotic doesn't mean it's an indication to change antibiotics or to intervene. You just monitor the culture report, you monitor the baby clinically and the clinical uh, uh, response of the baby is more important than the inflammatory marker. Of course, if it doesn't reduce by three to four days, we start thinking more in terms of what we should be doing again. Serum procalcitonin is a relatively more expensive test. It's another marker of inflammatory response. There is a quicker rise, there is a higher peak and also a quicker fall. So in the first one to three days of life, uh, the labor process has an impact on the C pro calcitonin and because it's very sensitive, the range is wide. It often goes to 10 to 20s range in the normal newborns in the first one to three days. So you cannot rely on it to decide on treatment. So we don't often do that in the first three days. Uh, later on, it can be used uh, in cases where the clinical features correlate with sepsis, but the CRP is normal. And because the same sample can be used as a CRP, you can always request the lab to add it on. If the CRP comes back uh, in a normal range and you want to rule out infection, you can add. So that's a more cost effective way to arrange for the procalcitonin. Again, the trend can be used, but if the CRP has risen as well, it's cheaper to repeat the CRP and monitor.